Hello and welcome to this GOM inspection basic training. My name is Daniel Milching. I'm a GOM certified trainer and I'm also working at the department training development here at GOM in Braunschweig. In this training, we're going to cover quite a lot because this training will give you all the necessary tools to start with our inspection software. That means we're going to have a look at the basics of using the software and then we're also going to have a look at basic inspections maybe sometimes even a little advanced inspections, and all the way to reporting your final results. Since this is probably the first contact you'll have with our software, there's of course no previous knowledge required, and we will cover all the essential steps that you need, all the tools that you need in your toolbox to work with our software effectively. If you have any questions uh, concerning what I'm telling you here, what I'm showing you in the software, in this training, um, please know that there's also a manual that's accompanying this training, so you will find everything that I'm saying, plus maybe even a bit more than that, in the manual accompanying this training, so please also have a look at that manual if you have any questions. Now, as I told you, we're gonna cover all the basic topics. That also means there's quite a few topics in this training. Let's see what we have. We're first going to start with an introduction to the software. So we're going to talk about what the software actually is, what it does, what it's meant to do. Then we'll have a look at the general operation of the software, which basically means we're going to have a look at the general user interface. So we're going to see all the different elements of the user interface and also see how they interact with each other. We're then going to take a look at the first simple inspection workflow. So these will be the simple fundamental inspections, but you will get to know how inspecting with the software works in general, so that afterwards we can then go on to more advanced inspections. We will then have a look at traceability and element dependencies, which is quite a crucial chapter because um, this is all about the parametric inspection within our software. We'll talk about what that means later on, but so far um, I can tell you that this chapter is going to be about all the uh, dependencies that are created within the software, that are created while using the software. This is nothing that you have to do actively, but the software will track everything you do in the software, and that leads to some major benefits that we're going to look at. Once we've covered those basics, we will then go on to look at the local best fit and tolerances. This is a chapter that combines multiple aspects. On the one hand, we're going to have a look at the local best fit as a major alignment. We're also going to look at how and where in the software you can designate tolerances. In the next chapter, measuring principles and I inspect, we're then going to have a look at a very um, essential functionality in our software being measurement principles. And we're going to have a look at the iInspect tool that helps us to assign measurement principles and also to do all the checks that we want to do. We're going to then have a look at the chapter inspection planning. Inspection planning means that we're going to take a look at how you can prepare all your inspections and evaluations without even having a measured mesh. So we're going to start by just taking the cat data of your part and we're going to look at how you can use this cat data to then yeah, plan all the inspections and ev evaluations you want to do later on. In the course of this chapter, we're also going to take a look at various new inspections. So this is not just for the workflow, how am I preparing my inspections. This is also to learn how um, certain inspections yeah, actually software. work. First of all, what does the software actually do? Well, it offers functions for 3D analysis. And the special thing about that, the special thing about the GOM software is that you can do what we call parametric inspection. Now, what does that mean? That means that if you have a certain workflow that maybe includes several steps to reach a certain goal. And then while reaching the goal, 
you suddenly realize that you maybe picked a wrong option a couple of minutes ago, you should have gone for another option, then you don't have to erase what you just did and start from scratch, but you can actually go ahead into every single step of your workflow, change maybe even just tiny things, and everything that depends upon these tiny changes will then automatically be updated um, so that in the end, your final product of the workflow will also be completely updated. This is very important and we will get back to that later on because this is a key feature of the GOM Inspect software. Having said that, the parametric inspection feature is something that's only available in the professional versions of the GOM software. You might have already seen that we also offer a free GOM Inspect version. So what's the difference between the professional and the free version? The difference is that the free version and that's the major difference, does not offer parametric inspection. So that means that in the free version, if you took, let's say, seven or eight steps to reach a certain goal, and then you figure out that you might have picked a wrong option along the way, the only option you have is to then erase everything you did up to that point or start from scratch. This is, of course, not necessary in Common Spec Professional, so that's the major difference between the two versions. Yet, the free common spec version is still very powerful. It offers, um, well, about the same tools that the common spec professional version offers, but it is meant to be used primarily as a kind of viewer that you can hand on to colleagues to open your projects that you've created, maybe even in common spec professional. Um, they can open the projects, they can also edit the projects, but they will not be able to make use of the parametric inspection. One thing that's common to all the GOM software versions, though, is this general workflow that you see here. Um, this is the basic workflow that would take you from importing your data to reporting your final results. And this workflow will not change. We're going to refer back to this workflow all the time during this training. So let's have a look at it. What's the first step? Well, of course, the first step would be to import your data. Um, we have the um, CID data depicted in this beige color down here, and we have the actual measured mesh depicted in this gray color up there. When you import your data, the um, project will automatically um, refer with its coordinate system to the CAT file. So the CAT file will be perfectly aligned to your project coordinate system, but the um, measured mesh will most likely be not. So the first thing you have to do is then to align the actual mesh to the cat data. And by that you would, well, bring them to about the same position. You can also define how that should be done. And once you've brought them to about the same position, you can then go ahead and actually inspect the differences. That would not be possible in this state, but it is possible in this state. The third image now shows that if you then want to go ahead and inspect something, you would always start by constructing an element, the element that you want to inspect, on your CAD data. Once you've constructed something on your CAD data, you then, of course, also need an actual element to match this element, because in the end you want to inspect the difference between the nominal and the actual element. So creating a, let's say, cylinder on the CAD data gets you a um, nominal cylinder, and we then have to figure out a way to also create a um, actual cylinder that matches this cylinder. We don't do that by hand, but we use what we call a measuring principle, and that kind of defines the way in which the software then automatically will create an um, actual element that is linked to this nominal element that we created here at the beginning. And once you've done that, you then get a nominal and an actual element, and you can then go ahead and check what the difference, for example, in diameter is between the two. And once you've done your checks, all the checks that you want to do, you can then go ahead and um, yeah, store the results that you've gotten in a report page. 
So this workflow is the general workflow that will never change and that we're going to come back to during the whole of this, this training. And at this point, I Let's think now take we can just start having a look on the actual interface. So I will now open a project. And this project will be just a pre-existing project that you can also access from your um, training data. And I think I'll just open maybe this one here. So once you've opened this project, your eyes will probably first be drawn to this space here in the center. And this is what we call the 3D view or 3D workspace. This is where you can have a look at all your elements in your project. And you can not only view them, but you can also edit them, as we will see later on. If I say you can have a look at all the elements in your project. So how do you know what elements there are in your project? And that can be seen on the left side here in the Explorer tab. The Explorer tab may be placed up here. If you don't see it, you can add it by clicking any of those plus signs. So all these um, views, all these tabs here can be um, placed or located as you wish. That is a new functionality from the software 2019 onwards. So if at any point you do not see any of those tabs that I'm talking about, you can always go to one of these plus signs, just click the plus sign and reopen the tab that has been closed, maybe by accident. So in this Explorer tab now, you will see there are a few categories. So first of all, you see there's a category part. And this category um, includes all the elements that belong to your one part. You can, in theory, have multiple parts within one project. Um, we will not deal with this in this basic training, but you can have additional training on that later on. For now, we will just have one part. And in this one part, there's everything that belongs to this one part. So there's the CAD, which I can show um, exclusively by just dragging and dropping it. So this is my CAD file. Then we have a mesh. This is my mesh. And then we have a bunch of other elements. So for example, nominal elements like geometries that I uh, constructed on my CID. For example, a circle that would be looking like that. And I can always toggle um, the view on and off by just uh, clicking on those eye icons. So for example, I could now also show the CID to see where this uh, circle that I just um, dragged and dropped is actually located on my object. So you see that um, all the elements in this Explorer are automatically assigned to one category. So first of all, we have the nominal elements. That is everything that has been constructed on our CAD. So anything you would construct or um, anything that the software would automatically construct is always assigned to the um, according yeah, subgroup of the Explorer here. We also have actual elements. So those are all the elements um, that have been constructed um, either by you or by the software on the um, measured mesh. And we have the inspection elements. Those are, so to say, the results of your inspections. So for example, we have here a surface comparison. That would be the result of an inspection of the surfaces or a comparison of the surfaces of the cat and mesh file that we have in our project. You can see additional information on all the objects in your Explorer down here. So um, those tabs are by default um, not shown, but the relates to is shown by default. So there's multiple things you can do here. For example, in the first tab here, chosen elements, you will now see an overview of everything that belongs or that is inside the um, element that you've selected here in your Explorer. So let's say, for example, I have a large project with many elements in it. We can then go and, for example, hit the nominal elements here, mark it. And in this chosen elements folder, I would then see everything that's inside this folder, nominal elements. 
So those, those would be all those elements down here. And I can use this now to, well, navigate more easily through my um, yeah, large project by not just opening every single subcategory up here in my explorer, but I can just keep my explorer as is, just hit any of those categories that doesn't have to be a um, major category could also be that for example I go into the subcategory geometries and I would then see everything that is in this subcategory geometries unfolded just the the same way I would also see it if I went and manually unfolded everything up here so this is the first way you can use those additional explorers down here this is one tab the chosen elements tab that is um, common among all the um, additional explorer views you have offered down here and something that's um, different depending on which one you have um, selected here is the additional functionality in this case um, you would see all elements that are related to one element that I select up here in my main explorer so if for example I have a look at the surface comparison so this here um, we'll talk about more uh, in detail what that actually is a surface comparison in a minute if I select the surface comparison I would then see in the related elements and I can minimize this for now this is somehow related to the CID to the mesh and also to an alignment those are all the elements that this surface comparison is related to and then we have two other um, well views to other ways to check for dependencies within the software by also showing depends on or required for. So the depends on of course would show us all the elements that the surface comparison is based on and as I said the surface comparison is nothing more than just a comparison between the cat and mesh surfaces so it is of course dependent on the cat and mesh file and it is required for in this case a couple of report pages so the required for would show you all the elements that are based on the surface comparison and the depends on would show you all the elements that the surface comparison is based on itself so those are just three additional ways to navigate through large projects more easily and those are all kinds of explorers and it doesn't actually matter if I select something down here so for example if I wanted to see my mesh I could easily just drag and drop it from down here there's no difference also when I toggle the visibility on and off it's just the same if I do it up here in my main explorer or in those additional explorer categories. With this we've now arrived at our first exercise so you will now have the possibility to try what I've shown you for yourself. For the exercise, please start by creating a project and then, of course, first import your CAD data and your actual data. You will find those files, for example, the GOM part without FTA.step in this folder. So please refer to the training data folder and in this specific folder, you will then find the CAD file and in this folder, you will then find the actual file which is a G3D, so our own GOM kind of file. Once you've imported those, you can then go ahead and pre-align the data by clicking this button up in the um, top right corner of the um, software. You will find this in the main inspection toolbar, just as the other buttons that we're going to use. So in the fifth step, create a surface comparison on CAD, again with this button that you will find in the inspection toolbar and when you're asked to enter a max distance then just type three millimeters for example then please change the upper and lower legend value to a value that is more suitable